So now that now that we have our basic shading solver operational and, and configured here, let's talk about adding some detail to the shading solution. So obviously we have a pretty rough geometry model right now. We just have our thermal zones and the only thing causing any shading to our windows is the self-shading from the building itself. So the fact that the windows are inset a little bit into the window, into the wall, um, that's the only thing causing any shading at the moment. So let's add some additional shading elements and let's see how that affects our overall shading solution here. So if you notice, I'll come into it, so we're in our shade, a little shading section here where we've been working, and um, if we come into our shading factor simple, notice that we have the optional input for any number of additional shading surfaces. So we can input pretty much anything we want here in order to um, have it get recognized as a, a shading object. So we can definitely add in some additional shading objects. And then the other thing that we want to do is we want to come into our geometry and we want to, we want to um, adjust some of the uh, values here. For instance, I don't want this central element to get recognized as a, a shading reveal. This is a mull between two windows, and so that should get treated as a, as a non-reveal edge. So we have a couple different things that we'd like to do here in order to, um, in order to sort of manage the, the information here. So let's start by refining our windows. How are we going to deal with all of these mulled edges? Well, it's relatively straightforward. So if I click on, let's say, for instance, this window. So I have my windows on. I'm in wireframe view right now so that I can see my uh, preview geometry and um, get the windows. So I've got my window. So let's say I select this window. How do I tell this window that this right-hand edge is a mold condition? Well, I can do that pretty easily. Come up here to my PHPP, to my PHPP ribbon or toolbar, come into set window parameters. And when I set window parameters, um, as we have seen in past videos, we can set the frame and the glazing, the variant type, the window install depth. We looked at that in the last couple of videos. But notice down here, we can also set these so-called install edges. And this is the way that we tell the PHPP, oh, that edge is a mulled window edge. So first of all, do not apply any shading. Don't calculate reveal shading on that edge. And secondly, do not apply a psi install value along that edge. Right? The psi install values, we're going to apply those to all of the installed edges of the windows. But we wouldn't want to apply a psi install to this floating mulled edge. That would not be appropriate. We wouldn't get the right uh, total heat loss value. So I can turn that off by just simply setting that right hand edge to off. You say it is not an installed edge. And if I say OK, and if I do the same thing to the left hand edge of this window, so I have to do it to, to both there, come up here to set windows, and then I turn off the left edge of this window. So I turn off the right edge of this window, and I turn off the left edge of this window. And then if I push those windows through, again, I could probably use a pipeline to do this more automatically. But if I push those windows through, that should get recognized by the solver. And so when we do the window inset and the reveal geometry calculation, that central uh, element should not get um, uh, built out. And in fact, here you can see in the, if I turn windows off, notice that I no longer, oops, I no longer have that reveal edge there. So that no longer will be part of, or it won't get, it won't get um, interpreted when we do our shading, shading solver calculation. And so if I come over here and I turn my check lines back on, notice that this guy, this edge is no longer finding that central mull. It's sort of reaching all the way over to this far edge here. And so that's no longer being recognized, which is which is as it should be. And we could do the same thing for these upper elements. So for instance, with this guy here, I could come in and I could say, turn off the right hand edge. For the middle one, I would actually say, turn off the right and turn off the left. And then for the right hand guy, uh, window over here, I would say, turn off just the left. Say, OK. And now if I push through those second story windows, if I update those second story windows, those will flow through. And you'll see when this updates uh, that those mulled edges also disappear. And so again, this is important when it comes to uh, 
accurate shading calculation. So that's key, right? We're seeing it right now when it comes to shading. It'll also be important later on when we go to apply our Psi install values, because again, we would not want to apply the Psi installs along these edges. And so that'll uh, flow through properly there. So we could do the same thing. We could go through and do these windows and those windows. And I think there's some on this side that are also mulled together. So we've got some mold there. So we can go through and we could do each one. We could uh, grab each one uh, and, and do it that way. So that's great, right? We've got a bunch of refined um, uh, inputs now. So we're, we're sort of refining our, our shading solution uh, there, which is great. Now, the other thing that I might want to add would be the roof. So it's possible that the roof overhangs are actually going to cause some shading on these upper story windows. So I might want to add in the roof element. So let's add in the roof element and let's add that in as, a, as its own set of shading surfaces. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to just lock this for a second, and let's go back to our Rhino scene here, and let's um, let's go ahead and make ourselves a new, let's make a whole new layer for shading. Let's say we'll say 05 shading, and I like to I like to separate my shading into like. Um, you know, building, what I call building shading, which is things like roof overhangs and parapets and guardrails and such. Um, and then there's context shading, which is stuff like neighbors and trees and, and things like that. I mean, you, you know, depending on your situation, you can break up your layers however you see fit. But let's, let's say I'm going to make some building shading and then we'll add some context shading in a little bit. Okay, so how do I model these roofs? Uh, you can model them any way that you like. I'm just going to turn on my... Um, section geometry here, and um, let's uh, let's just do it this way. Let's just make a super quick surface. Um, am I on? Let me just check my construction plane. Make sure we're back on world uh, world origin, and let's just make a let's just make a quick surface here. It's fine. Let's do it like that, and let me go back to shaded view so that you can see it. So we got this, and let's just make it. I guess I should turn on. What do I want to turn on? I guess my, I guess my elevations would be the best to show me where. What did I do? There we go. So I want to pull the roof all the way out to here, in one direction, and then in the other direction. And I'm just using my one-dimensional scale right now to resize this. You could use sub-object selection and move the edges or do anything like that. So I'm going to make, so there, so there's one roof. And um, I'm just going to hold down the alternate key and make a copy of it. So hold down the, op or the option key on my keyboard, make a copy of it, turn off all these stupid lines. And we'll move this one over here. And there we go. So we have a little hat on our building now, right? We've got a little, we've got a little overhang, and notice that we've got some overhang. So we might get some, we might get some shading from that onto these guys here. Um, and so let's bring these in now as shading surfaces in our grasshopper model. So let me bring back my grasshopper model, and it's straight, you know relatively straightforward. We could use a pipeline. We could use any sort of method we want here. I'm just going to reference in those two B reps um, discreetly. I'll say these are. We'll say this is the roof. And so in order to make this work, all we need to do is add the roof to our shading surfaces input. Uh, and then that should get taken into account when we uh, when when this uh, calculates the shading. So let's see if that works. Let me just do this. And we'll unlock the solver there. And this should go off and calculate. And it should take those into account. And we should see that uh, in the output there. OK, there we go. So that's solved. And let's see. Did we? Yeah. OK, so you can see here with our check lines that our upper story windows, they reached out and found the edge of that of that south shading element there. So that's going to flow through into our PHPP now. Okay, so that's going to those uh, those lines get um, get found there. And um, uh, all, all of that is going to uh, uh, get interpreted and flow through into the PHPP. And so we can do the same thing with any type of shading that we want. So we can we can sort of input as much shading as we like. I mean, for instance, if we want to, um, let's put a, let's say we have a neighbor off to the south. So maybe I go to my contacts here and let's just say that we draw in just a, just a, um, just a neighbor like yay, right? We maybe have, I don't know, maybe it's 
maybe it's taller than that. Do sub object selection and pull pull that up, right? So maybe it's something like that, and I could say that's my neighbor. V rep neighbor. And I'll reference that in, say set one vrep. Perfect. And now I could certainly just join them together. Oops, I should could jo join them together at the component. I usually like to use a merge component so that um, everything is uh, really obvious what's happening. So if I input that into the uh, shading solver there, uh, this should um, find all of those. And there we go. Once that's done, come over here and grab this. And so notice what's happening now. So now, these south-facing windows are reaching out. They find this intersecting neighbor object. Then they reach up and they find the top and they figure out how high up it is. So those things are all sort of happening dynamically. Notice these windows do not find it. The way that this PHPP shading solver works is it shoots the ray straight out from the window. So if that happens to sort of bypass the, the neighbor, you're out of luck. So if the neighbor was over there, then it gets taken into account. So that would be, that would be, you'll see in a second, that will be a valid intersection when those rays shoot through. But the ray shoots straight out. And so if it's a little off to the side, then it will uh, you know, very commonly sort of miss the, miss the shading object there. But we could go in and we could build out whatever context we wanted. We could add neighbors to the east and west. We could add them wherever we like, um, all, all of that kind of stuff. So we can build out our context geometry there, which is terrific. And then, of course, we can go in and we can add any other elements we might want. So for instance, one thing that we might commonly want to do is we might want to add some horizontal overhangs. So for instance, maybe I would come in here and I would come, let's go to Surface Tools, and maybe I would do something like this, where I would go like this and then pull out a little bit and say we want some sort of a little horizontal overhang like that. And let's add that to our set here as well. So I'll say BRAP. We'll call this overhang. Again, you could be um, using a, a, a pipe line of, of some sort and you know referencing whole groups of geometry at once that would be just fine um, but um, you know uh, just for, for our demonstration purposes here I'll just do it one sort of little element at a time just to give you a flavor of sort of how it works um, obviously you can grab as many as many objects or as many in, um, you know surfaces or, or elements as you like and feed them into the solver here and it'll it'll sort of reach out and find all of those find all of those elements And as you can see here, so there we can see the these guys, this guy reached out and found that sort of overhang element there. And so um, all of the, the shading is now sort of recognizing the context around it. So that's great. Let me just tidy up here a little bit. Uh, do it this way, do that. Okay, and let me Turn all these off. There we go. So there's our shading flowing in. Uh, and there's our shading flowing out. All right, so let's see what that did to our PHPP. And let's see uh, how, this, how this affected our overall performance here. So let me turn those off for the time being. And whoa, what did I just do? There we go. And let me come over here to our PHPP, and let's output the PHPP for this new situation with all these new shading objects in our scene here. All right, and as soon as our PHPP is written, let's come in and take a look. Excellent. So we're getting all sorts of new information here. So notice some of the windows, these are our south-facing windows, they find a horizon object. And they found it one or two meters in height, depending if they're on the second floor or the first floor. Um, uh, they found it 11 meters away, 11 and a half meters away. Um, they notice we've got some interesting information flowing through here for our lateral reveals as well as our overhangs. We've got here's our nice deep overhang. Um, well, that's on the north side there. This is our south door, our south door overhang here. So all of that geometry information is now flowing through properly into our shading tab. And if we were to scroll over to the right hand side, Notice that all of these shading factors, 
for the horizon, the reveal, the overhang are all calculated individually, and then they're compounded to give us a total shading factor for the heating case and a sh total shading factor for the cooling case. And now notice we're getting values anywhere from 48 44% up to 97%. So we're getting a much bigger diversity of shading factors because obviously we have a more complex shading situation in our PHPP now. Now, what about all these gaps? Why are there some sort of gaps in the data here? If you flow over, notice we've just got some uh, pieces that are um, not input here. Well, these are just elements. Remember, this is our horizon uh, shading. Uh, section. These are elements which just didn't find any horizon shading objects. So if I zoom in here and I turn back on my check lines, right, we had a whole bunch of windows that had no horizon shading object found within that 99 meter limit. Now I could increase the limit to, you know, 400 meters if I had some object which was really far away. Um, but at a certain point, you just don't have any shading objects. And so you won't have any information to input there. So if we have a gap, that just means there wasn't any shading object found for that section. And that's totally fine. You don't have to have shading objects for every, for every window uh, by any stretch. So this is now all flowing through correctly. And if we were to go to our heating worksheet, go back to our heating worksheet, these reduction factors in the available solar gains portion, these reduction factors are now much more accurate. Notice our total solar gains are now somewhere around 3,700 kilowatt hours per year. And that's going to change our overall heating energy demand, cooling energy demand, overheating um, results, primary energy, et cetera. Right? So this has a big ripple effect. This is obviously going to change uh, a lot of our overall energy balance uh, when it comes to our, our project here. So hopefully that's relatively straightforward. Hopefully it makes sense how you can build out a pretty complicated shading scene um, uh, using you know not too many components here. You're just going to feed in whatever geometry into the shading surfaces here and use the automatic window reveal calculator to, to inset the windows and calculate all, all the reveals. Um, and then that should all flow through into PHPP relatively straightforwardly. Of course, the downside, you've already seen a couple of downsides here. There's a couple of downsides. One, one is that it's a relatively crude um, in terms of the geometry recognition. So you saw when the, when the geometry here was just a little off to the left, it didn't find it at all. Um, if this uh, geometry was sort of um, sawtooth in shape up and down, you know, this solver doesn't really know what to do with that type of irregular shading element. Um, it's also relatively, in terms of the geometry calculation that I that I have in the tool right now, it's pretty slow in terms of, you know, it has to go and take every window and try and intersect it with every shading element in the scene to find those intersections. And, you know, that's just a lot for it to do. And so it's relatively slow as a, as a solver. Um, in addition, the uh, shading factors that come out are not terribly nuanced. It's really quite hard to do detailed things like screens or transparencies, trees, um, thing, uh, anything with a lot of detail in terms of the shading uh, configuration can be quite challenging to do using this method. So uh, in the next uh, couple videos, we will come back and I want to take a look at a completely different method of doing shading. We'll look at a totally alternate optional method of doing shading, which is going to use the ladybug radiation solver, which is going to help us to do a, I think, much better, more detailed, and certainly much faster shading assessment for our windows here. So when we come back in the next videos, we will take a look at that alternative method if you don't want to use the simplified numerical shading as shown in this case.